So today we're going to talk about how custom tools work in Crew AI. We're not going to get into anything technical. This is going to be a conceptual video. So even if you're driving, you know, you can just leave this playing in the background while you're on your way to work since I post these videos in the morning. But anyway, one of the cool things about Crew AI is that it's relatively simple to set up. Even if you don't have a lot of programming experience, once you're able to get it running, even just with basic agents, you really start to see the benefit and the potential that AI agents have. Now, if you guys have been working with Crew AI, I'm sure you've used some of the tools that are available for it. And also, as you've gotten better at making projects with Crew AI, I'm sure you're starting to get to a point where you need and you want more custom functionality to what your agents do, to what your crew does, and the kind of data that it can process. And this is where custom tools come in. So in this diagram right here, I have the layout for a basic Crew AI project. And I just use these containers just so you can kind of like mentally picture what's going on in the background of Crew AI. As you know, a crew is made up of multiple tasks. Here we have task one, two, and three. And if you've run Crew AI agents or written them before, I'm sure you've seen that for each task that you have, you also have a specific agent that's assigned to each task. Again, each task and each agent is described individually. And you try to match up the way that your agent behaves to be consistent with what you want to be completed within the task. And in simple terms, really what an agent does is it ends up reaching out to an external large language model. Whether you're using OpenAI, Grok, or Local Llama, your agent itself isn't really doing anything. Your Cray agent is really just a written framework to take advantage of all the capabilities that the large language model has. But depending on what you're using your agents for, there's gonna be a lot of use cases where your large language model isn't gonna have the appropriate data in order to complete the tasks that you want to complete. If you wanted to process data from specific files, well, of course, the large language model wasn't trained on that. If you're trying to scrape a website or gather data from a website, well, there are some web search tools that are already available in Core AI, but that website may already be blocking automation tools. Or maybe you're trying to pull proprietary data or customer data from a database. So it's pretty much where custom tools come in because this is the part where your agent is gonna be able to leverage Python code either to process data from a file you give it, or if you're trying to get data from a specific website, you're gonna be able to write out the logic to make it the API request. Or in the case where you're trying to analyze data from a specific record, either for a specific customer or using a specific ID, well, within your custom tool is where you would write out the logic to do your database query. And as I mentioned earlier, because the custom tool is using Python code to do this data processing, this is actually happening outside of what's going on with the LLM. Now the custom tool can retrieve this data. It can pass it on to the LLM for further analysis. But depending on what the task is, if it involves analyzing a large amount of data, if it involves processing or parsing or formatting a large amount of data, it's going to be better to do it through a custom tool rather than sending the entire file to your LLM. As you make more progress and evolve your Cray AI projects, custom tools are going to play a really big part in making sure you're getting consistent output. Because I do see during some of the calls, some of the one-on-ones that we've had, there is a common tendency where a lot of the formatting, a lot of the parsing and processing of data, which is outputted by the agents, is also being requested to be done by the agent itself, whether it's in that same task or in the following task. Now, even though large language models are becoming extremely sophisticated and extremely accurate, it's usually the more expensive ones that give you the consistent output. And I know for a lot of you, keeping these LLM costs down is a very important thing for your projects and for your business. So if you want to frequently get reliable results, then we're gonna have to develop a repetitive process via these custom tools, which will leverage more Python code, more Python libraries in order to process the data in a more precise manner. I really wanna thank you guys for the positive feedback that you've given me, both in the comments and the communities, as well as in the one-on-one -on -one calls. I know learning this stuff can seem a little bit overwhelming, but I really appreciate that you guys take the time to watch my videos in order to learn more about AI. So when you guys go out of your way to share with me, that you're learning, that you're improving on this topic and that you're able to implement it to your projects. It really encourages me to keep making this content. Now, if you feel like you're still struggling with Cray AI, I'm gonna leave a link in the description where you can book a one-on-one -on -one video call with me completely free, whether that's a Cray AI project that you're building for a personal project or for your business. I'm more than happy to jump on a call and see how I can help you out. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.